Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming to you today from a park bench inside the West Side Dog Park. I don't own a dog. I've never had a dog. But I do like dogs. And so I'm at the dog park. Hey. Hey. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? You're a good boy. Yeah, you are. You're a good boy. Okay. Back to math. Today's lesson is comparing and scaling lesson 2.1. We're going to be doing lesson... Um, the lesson today takes place on page 19. It's going to be A through E. And then we're going to do our ACE problems 1 through 3 and 9 through 13. And your learning target for today is I can make sense of part to part and part to whole relationships. If you were going to put something in your planner, it would be these two sections. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. Our notes for today look like this. We're going to be on page 19. It's lesson 2.1. We want to have name, date, and crew at the top. And our main heading is making sense of ratios and fractions. Now we've talked about ratios and we've talked about fractions. And we probably by now learned that it can be very confusing to use the two interchangeably. It does not work. For instance, a ratio is a part-to-part -part relationship. Okay, for example, if I have a recipe and I'm doing 3 to 1, it means for every 3, we have one of this. But how much are we actually putting in the whole recipe? If I have like 3 cups of flour and 1 cup of sugar to make some cookies or something, how much is actually going in the whole recipe? And that's where we have the part to whole, because a fraction... Okay, if we did 3 over 1, wouldn't work. Because that's not the fraction of the part to the whole. No, it's not at all. How much is going in this whole recipe to begin with? Well, if I've got 3 cups of flour and 1 cup of sugar, I'd have a whole of 4, and I would have 3 parts out of 4. So 3 fourths of the recipe is flour, right? 1 fourth would be sugar. And that's an important distinction, you know, because otherwise I'm going to get a really, really messed up um, answer to this. Okay? So for instance, here's my first of two example problems. There are 15 girls and 12 boys in a classroom. What would this be as a ratio, a fraction, and a percent? Well, remember, a ratio is part to part. So the ratio of girls to boys is going to be 15 to 12, where we have girls, we have boys. Now, if I were to turn that into a fraction, right, I could make two different fractions. The fraction of the class that is girls would be 15 over 27, and the fraction of boys would be 12 over 27. And if I were to make those into percents, then I would get a decent percent of around 44% boys and about, oh, 56 percent girls, okay? But it's important to remember that fractions and percents are parts of a whole or part of a hundred, okay? They are not part to part. So ratios are used often if we're mixing something, if we're making, trying to compare in order to mix or make something. For every three cups of this, add a cup of that. For every one gallon of this, add three tablespoons of this. You know, so something that we make as we go along. When we want to use fractions to describe bigger relationships, when we want to compare something to the whole big picture. Okay, so for example, I have two lakes that have been surveyed for fish. Elkhart Lake has six bluegills 
and two walleye. And Lake 7 has 14 bluegills and five walleye. Which lake is better for walleye? Well, if I take Elkhart, okay, we have a ratio of 6 to 2. Okay, and if I take Lake 7, it has a ratio of 14 to 5. Well, that's not a really good explanation. Now, I could play around with these ratios, try to double them or half them, but what I'm really looking for is a comparison that is universal. So to make a comparison that's universal, I'm going to make these both into fractions. Well, I want to know the blue get the walleye, so I'm going to put the 2 up top because that represents my walleye. But I'm going to take both of these and add them because they represent the whole. So 2 eighths of the fish that we caught there are walleye. Lake 7, it's going to be 5 nineteenths of the fish were walleye. Well, again, I could play around and try to get equivalent fractions and greatest common factors and all that kind of fun stuff. But you know what's a whole lot easier than that? A whole lot easier than that is just to make them into percents. To do 2 divided by 8 times 100 and to do 5 divided by 19 times 100. And percents are handy because percents are pretty universal. I can take any fraction and make it into a decimal, and take that decimal and make it into a percent. And it does not matter, you know, if they're equivalent or not. If they're the same fraction, they're both set to be part of a hundred. Of a hundred. So let's see what we get when we do that. When I do 2 divided by 8 times 100, I get exactly 25%. 25% of the fish that are caught are walleye. When I do 5 divided by 19, I get 0.26315789. Let's just round that to 0.26, which then becomes 26%. So by a very slim margin, Lake 7 is my winner. Okay? Now, I only can do this because I understand the part-to-whole and part-to-part -part relationship. That I can take a part-to-part -part and make it into a part-to-whole. And with a little bit of work, we can go the other way as well. Right? I know that for every one of this, I'm going to catch so many of that. Okay? And I'll show you that in the next example as well. So here we have two classes. We have a class where 75% of the class likes tacos. We have another one where 30% of the class prefers pizza. Well, how do we make this into a ratio? How do I know how many tacos do I order compared to other things? Well, to do that, I have to take first my 75% and make it into a fraction. I can do that by making it into 75 over 100. And when I make this into lowest terms, I end up getting 3 quarters. Well, if 3 quarters, okay, if 3 is my part, what and 3 are going to add to make 4? 3 to 1. So kids prefer pizza by a, I'm sorry, kids prefer tacos by a ratio of 3 to 1. Now, if I do the same thing with the class that prefers pizza, okay, if I take 30% over 100, I end up getting 3 tenths when that reduces down. So 3 is my part. What and 3 makes 10? 3 sevenths. So, a, a 3 to 7. So, the kids like pizza at a ratio of 3 to 7. So, as you can see, we can go and take a part to part and make it into a part to whole. 
and we could take a um, a whole, a part to whole, and make it into a part to part ratio. All right, your classwork today is going to be on lesson two point one. It's going to be page nineteen, A through E, and then you're going to be doing the ACE problems one through three, and nine through thirteen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have fun.